Jennifer Kredovic. I'm the Ward 3 City Councilor here in the City of Concord and also the Councilor that represents Beaver Meadow Golf Course. I'm here with, today with my very good friend Mark Cohen and we're going to talk about the 125th anniversary of Beaver Meadow Golf Course and it seems appropriate because I think you and I have been here forever. Right. How long have you been a member? 125 years. <laughs> but, uh, I was here uh, when uh, uh, Willie Campbell came up off the train. And, really? Oh yes. I joined here in 25 years ago at the 100th anniversary. I think I, I am just about 26, maybe 27 years. I think what attracted me to Beaver Meadow is that it is not like a country club experience. It is the beef, and it's the beef for a reason, because it's more welcoming to all, um, all walks of life to participate here. And as a city municipal course, um, I think that that's been a really important part of the the assets that we have here in the community. Hi everybody, I'm Mike Higgins, the Executive Director of the New England PGA, and I'm extremely excited to be here today and, and talk about a really special place in New Hampshire golf. And it doesn't get much better than Beaver Meadow. You know, the Northeast has just such rich history for, for the game of golf and and truly the game of golf in the United States started in the Northeast and a lot of the New England states were were a part of that. You know some of the founding golf courses in, in, in for the United States Golf Association are, are in our area with the Country Club in Brookline and, and Newport in Rhode Island and to have a golf course like Beaver Meadow that you know truly saw the birth of golf in, in the United States and, and was around with uh, uh, the early days of, of, you know, folks coming from Boston, heading up to New, New Hampshire to play to play golf, and then golf started expanding throughout the United States, and it's just a really special area. And, and there are so many golf courses that have a, a warm place in people's hearts in the in the Northeast. So many people over the years have have grown up playing Beaver Meadow. They learned how to play golf at Beaver, Beaver Meadow. They have some of their best friendships and relationships at golf course like Beaver Meadow because it's been around for for so long and there's just generations and generations of of golfers who have teed it up at, at the course and you know really are part of history. So I think you know Beaver is kind of woven into the fabric of golf in this state. I think without Beaver where would we be? Um, you know it's kind of the place that started it all and I think that it really holds a special place for the golfers in this state having that historical significance as being the first golf course here in New Hampshire. And I think that players continue to come here and can appreciate the, the historical nature of what Beaver is and what it's become. Page Belting owned over 700 acres in this area at one time. They were gonna, in the 1880s, uh, there, the plan was to build a village, an industrial factory village at this site. And then we had a national depression. And so the financing dried up and so it lay dormant. If you look at what golf was, you know, in the late 1800s in this country, it was a recreation activity that a lot of cities and towns, in looking for ways to keep residents entertained, they looked at these big public spaces. And as golf continued to grow in popularity, a golf course was a natural fit for any sort of local community. That's, that's sort of the history of, particularly in the Northeast, of municipal golf courses and how a lot of golf courses got started. In 1896, when this golf course was laid out, there was a huge movement in the United States, especially in the Northeast, about outing clubs and recreation. People were getting out, they had bicycle clubs, they had canoeing clubs, they had all sorts of recreational clubs, and there's still some scattered all through the city. But Beaver Meadow was actually one of those also. And uh, women were very active in, in the, originally with the game of golf. And I think that one of the other things when it comes to like women in golf, um, when we talk about Beaver Meadow, we know that three women were part of the founding of this course. Uh, Mabel, Harriet, and Harriet, I know there were two Harriets, I wish I could remember the name, Harriet Anderson might be one of them, and Paul Holden. Paul Holden, Holden was part of the woolen manufacturing in Pentecook. So uh, we have the Holden Bell, which is on the 12th hole, um, which is part of the Holden family that they donated uh, many years ago. But um, the three women and Paul that really started the golf course entirely, you know, when you read the histories in um, 
in the city of Concord. It says, you know, just east of the Maple Grove Cemetery, which is essentially where the tennis courts are today at uh, Beaver Meadow. Um, that would have been the first hole. That's where they started and they basically hit a golf ball and uh, it, it all rolled from there. There was a couple, Willie and Georgina Campbell, and they're both uh, recently inducted into the New England PGA Hall of Fame. It's a really cool story. They immigrated from, from Scotland and they were a duo working at the uh, course together, designing golf courses together. And Willie was, was instrumental in some of the design work at some of the best golf courses in, in all of New England. And many of you have, have heard about Wanamoiset Country Club in Rumford, Rhode Island, Tatnick Country Club, where uh, in Worcester, Massachusetts, Oakley Country Club, which was Donald Ross's first golf course when he came to the United States. And of course, Beaver Meadow. Willie Campbell, who came up from Boston and, and laid out the original front nine, um, worked at uh, the Country Club of uh, Brookline, uh, a very prestigious and, and exclusive uh, country club. He also was involved with the Myopa Hunt Club in Hamilton, Mass designing their course, and also the Essex County Club in Manchester by the Sea, Massachusetts. And, uh, but his passion, he came over from Scotland. He was in his late 20s, uh, working for uh, the country club in Brookline. But uh, his, his passion was to make golf available to the public, and not just exclusively at country clubs in the upper uh, rich. And so he, uh, we worked on talk to the city of Boston to open up a golf course. It was called Franklin Park at the time. And he and his wife uh, uh, was the golf pro and, and the superintendent running the golf course. So his passion was to make golf available for the public. Willie Campbell golf. has 11 courses that he created. There's um, three or four in Scotland. Mm -hmm. There is uh, the ones in Massachusetts that you mentioned here, Beaver Meadow in New Hampshire. Philadelphia has one and two in Colorado, and that's it. That's all there is. They were one of the first golf professionals in the country to really start um, providing instruction and, and teaching women in the game of golf. And it's pretty amazing. Some of there aren't many photos from back then, but Georgina, you know, the the clothing and the garb of the day was was not the uh, easiest to play golf in with, with uh, a dress from you know, neck to, to, to feet and, and tight fitting and boots. And uh, I can't imagine what it was like to swing and teach golf back back then in that outfit. But he, he passed away, Willie passed away in 1900. And she was hired in Boston at Franklin Park and was the um, uh, first uh, or head golf professional there for a long, long time, which is pretty amazing. We, we think in all of the records, we think she was the first female uh, golf professional in, in, in the country. And, and she retired and moved to Boston, New Hampshire and uh, not, down, not far from here. So the other thing that the history books say is that Willie designed this course for us for $50. Do you know what that's worth today? No. $1,659. So, that is a deal. Yeah. A deal then and a deal even today. When the course first opened in 1896, I mean first time, Willie Campbell comes up, he lays out the course, and now they're ready to go. They had 120 members. Can you imagine for such a small town, right. 120 members on the day they opened? That is crazy. In 1930, uh, the city of Concord purchased Beaver Meadow Golf Course. It was a private club that moved over to the other side of the river, and it gave the opportunity what you're talking about, Jennifer, is that the general public had an opportunity to play golf. And I'm, I'm sure Willie Campbell would have been very proud of the fact that what this golf course uh, morphed into, being a public course for everybody. I think that Beaver Meadow holds a really unique place as a municipal golf course. There are not a lot of those that exist anymore. And the backbone of golf in this country was really built on municipal golf courses. So I think it's special for the Concord community, the greater Concord community, but I think as the golf community as a whole here in New Hampshire that Beaver continues to be here. It continues to be a great golf course that anyone can access and, and it's city owned as well. And I think that's that really makes it unique in the landscape of golf right now here in 2022. It always uh, surprises me 
that people ask me, they don't realize that the city of Concord owns this golf course and it's a municipal course and it's open to the public. Um, and for instance, they come in and utilize uh, the dining facility. They think it's a private dining area. And, say, it, no, it, and the food is fantastic. Yeah, I mean, the burgers, good. amazing. And reading the annual report, uh, they were mildly surprised that it actually uh, made a profit. <laughs> and, it, and it wasn't a burden on the uh, taxpayer. On the taxpayer, yeah. In 1930. And so it was 34 years the city takes over. It was another uh, 36, eight years later that the golf course was expanded 18 holes. And again, it was, uh, it was a surplus uh, entity here that uh, it wasn't costing the Concord taxpayers any money. The golf course paid for itself. What we have here that's kind of for me is kind of uh, unique is that we have Willie Campbell who's in the Hall of Fame and the, and the mm -hmm. Northeastern PGA Hall of Fame and Jeffrey Cornish or Jeff Cornish who designed the back nine in 1967 and completed 1968 is also a Hall of Fame golf, ar golf architect. So I, I do think it's always interesting our 14th hole and our 16th hole how they have the shared green it's almost like that homage to that Lynx golf yeah. that exists over in Scotland. Um, even though Willie didn't design that portion of it and uh, Cornish did, it still has that feel of a Scottish course. And that's, uh, that's one of the things that Cornish was famous for, some of these unique layouts like the double green on the 14 and 16, and also some tree placements, getting back to trees. Oh, I know. <laughs> that every once in a while you had this quirky thing of putting a tree in an in a, uh, awkward position when you, when you play golf, but uh, it's, uh, I, I just want to again emphasize how important Cornish was to the game of golf in the 1960s and 70s. He was the guru at that time and with hundreds of golf courses uh, that he either developed the back nine or, or uh, modified some courses that are uh, world known. The value of working at a public golf course um, and in a, in a municipal golf course of that um, is that you get to you get to engage all all demographics. You know, you you get the um, you know the boys and girls club kids coming up here that maybe wouldn't have an opportunity to go play at a private golf course or, or get a lesson from a golf professional, but you do here at Beaver Meadow. Um, you know, the the uh, senior golfers here. You know, they, they get their exercise every single day, and I get to engage with engage with them and 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 have clinics with them, have you know great conversation. Um, you know, I think I think it's busy. I think I think that's probably the most exciting part about it is is your days go, go by very fast, um, and it's it, there's a lot of activity. The view of it is it's supposed to be affordable and uh, available to the regular citizens of Concord and so to keep the rates as affordable as possible. Uh, it does uh, put a strain at sometimes financially, but that's, uh, but that's understood and, uh, because of what we're trying to do here, what the course is supposed to do. But over the years, uh, and a continuation of this thing is that there are so many nonprofits in Concord that have the opportunity to use Beaver Meadow as a fundraiser for their organization and that uh, the management here and the council and, and the management of the city uh, understand that's part of the objective of what we're doing here. And so it's, it's very welcoming to uh, organizations and nonprofits to, uh, to have events. I organize and host about 30 charitable events a year here from, as, from events like the Boys and Girls Club, the Chamber of Commerce, um, Henniker Food Pantry, some of the, some of the, those are just a few of the organizations that we, we work with here at Beaver Meadow. Uh, there's a, a, a tournament played every year on Thanksgiving morning called the Mile Standish. It's the Mile holes. Standish. It's nine <laughs> holes. Uh, Roger Jobin was the founder of that. I think almost 30 years ago. And we have a picture here somewhere showing uh, the typical day on Thanksgiving morning to play golf with about eight inches of snow on the ground. 
you know, it's a, it's a place that's hosted uh, seven New Hampshire amateur championships and two New Hampshire women's amateur championships. So the, the amount of golfers that have come through here, um, they, they've seen it all. They've been around the country when you're talking about elite players. They've played everywhere. And I think everybody still has a fondness when they come back here to play. Maybe it's because they played junior golf here. Um, maybe it's just because they played here over the years with, with friends and family. But I think you, you see that with the players when we come here year after year. You know, we host a state amateur qualifier here that's always held on a Saturday or a Sunday and it's always sold out. And you just see people that come and they want to play in the qualifier here at Beaver because it's a place they've, they've played over the years. Um, they're familiar with it. Again, it's a really playable golf course. It's fun to play. The other nice thing I, I felt about Beaver Meadow is that we had an opportunity to have a professional golf tournament tour stay here. I mean, they played here for about nine years. And um, That's the Symmetra. That was the Symmetra tour that's, a, that's the uh, feeder to the LPGA. And there's many players that played here that are currently on the LPGA tournament. Uh, so that's kind of nice to, to look at that. So, no, it's incredible so, that, you know, you can watch LPGA golf now and you can see some of the women that when they were really just in college that they played here out of Beaver Meadow and they're like in the top money winners now. Yes. Uh, one, one player that uh, I got to caddy for uh, named Mo Martin and uh, a few years after winning here, she won the British Open. This is a classic old golf course. What it is, it's not the length. It's, it's the nuances about the greens and, your, and how you play the hole in the game. And it uh, it's, uh, looks easy, but there's some subtleties to it. So it, The rough is very deep. Yeah. It's very hard to hit out of. Right. It is not the same type of grass conditions that they're used to playing, especially in the southern parts of the United States. I mean, it's a totally different product that they are hitting off of. Yeah, absolutely. A so, turf. So uh, the players enjoyed, uh, the professional players enjoyed coming here. To talk about a, a championship, you know, it, it first starts with the coordination with the, the staff here at the club. And the, the professional staff here has always been more than willing to work with the NHGA to host events. And, and once we've coordinated with them, um, you know, it's a matter of getting out here, getting the golf course set up. And again, that's where our relationship kind of shifts from the, the folks that are working inside to the staff that's outside. Once we get on site, um, you know, that coordination is all done beforehand, the communications there, and, and it's a matter of the players coming up and showing up and, and going out and playing and um, making sure that from, from our standpoint, what we want whenever we want any tournament, whether it's a state amateur um, or something that's not, not quite as competitive, we want the golf course to be the star of the show. Um, and, and when we come here to Beaver, and, and really when we go anywhere, that's our goal. And, and this place is no different than anywhere else, that when people come up the golf course, last year would be a perfect example, is the, the compliments that we heard about the condition of the golf course and the work that's been done here at the facility in order to put a product together, not just for the members, not just for the the folks that show up on the weekend to play, but for a championship level event. They've, they've done a phenomenal job here in getting this golf course to be able to meet the needs of, of really every, every sort of golfer we have in the state. And what, what's really amazing, and looking at the history, I mean, we're, we're going back to the late 1800s and the golf course has only really had four PGA professionals in their, in their history, which is amazing. That, that talks about longevity, it talks about a great membership, it talks about great community, and there were some pretty special PJ professionals that have, have worked there. You know, Chet Wheeler, who was a uh, Purple Heart winner, which is just absolutely amazing. Ed Deshays, who was there forever, is a New Hampshire golf absolute legend. And Phil Davis, you know, is a New England section board winner, he's a New Hampshire chapter leader. So certainly the golf course knows, the, knows how to hire really, really well. Chet Wheeler was a longtime pro here at the golf course and he was part of World War II. He came back injured and he became the golf pro here. Even injured, um, he was able to play this sport. There's, there's much to be had and there's a lot of people with um, several disabilities that can be out here in a, with an adaptive sport. I think the other thing about a municipal course, uh, because it's owned by the city, what we had for us is a, a long continuity of uh, pros here. We had Chet Wheeler for many, many years, and uh, Ed Deshaies Ed, replaced yeah. uh, Chet, and again, he was 20 plus years as the pro 
here. Uh, and uh, great guys, both of them, very knowledgeable and very nice. And, uh, and the continuity and, and their personalities and styles made it a very welcoming place to play. And uh, we see this with, uh, I see it, the same thing with our current pro, uh, Phil Davis. The role of golf professional is, is really here at Beaver Meadow is to be the ambassador for the game of golf to the to the citizens of Concord and and the surrounding areas you know so we we want to be stewards of the game um, we want to teach our junior golfers the proper way to play we want to be uh, engaging to all all of our demographics that we have here at Beaver Meadow and in and it, you know in the surrounding golf community we uh, we certainly have you know a lot of senior membership here so we we try to try to have golf clinics that that uh, you know, suit them. We certainly do a lot with with youth. Uh, we've always partnered with Concord Parks and Rec, and and we now do we do have some initiatives with the Boys and Girls Club, First Tee of New Hampshire, and um, and PGA Junior League, which is an uh, an initiative by uh, the national brand of the PGA. And so we've just tried to continue on whether it was Ed Deshays or Chet Wheeler, they're all well known in the community because this is, this is Concord's course. This is an accessible golf course to everybody. So, you know, we're, as golf professionals, we're in a very, very, uh, it's a great spot to become, to become something within the community. When I first started golfing here, um, you know, I couldn't golf on the weekends because I had kids, but I would like sneak over at the end of the day and did not. You pay? Of course, they did. Oh. <laughs> Don't be silly. Um, but I used to golf with Bill Verano, our mayor. former mayor, and he was mayor at the time. And uh, of course, I was silly and didn't know that. <laughs> I wasn't um, paying attention, I guess. And um, but he would golf in the afternoons when he finished work before he would go do uh, city council meetings if he had meetings and stuff like that. And um, it's interesting that you can always come over and just pick up golf with anybody, um, including the fact that you could come over and golf with the mayor just on random. Um, but a lot of people that I met throughout the city uh, were people that I met here at Beaver Meadow. Well, we've, the associations, the NHA has always had a really positive relationship here with Beaver Meadow, um, particularly in the last eight years or so when we moved our operations to here in Concord, having Beaver Meadow right down the road has been fantastic for us. It, it's a golf course that we utilize a lot, whether it's for our championship events, whether it's for more casual tournaments, for state amateur qualifiers. This is, this is a great golf course for us to allow our members to come and play. It's not an easy course, and yet at the same time, if you ask golfers in the state of New Hampshire, they will tell you it is one of the best walkable courses right. um, that there is out there. Um, it's, it's easily accessible for everybody. It's a very playable golf course. You get um, you know, two different sides of the golf course. The front nine a little more wide open, um, not as penal for some errant shots. And then you go to the back nine, it's a completely different golf course and it's a lot more challenging. So that 14, 15, 16th hole, when you make that turnaround, that is probably one of the toughest plays in golf. So we're able to hold championships here and challenge our best golf, golfers in the state we're able to hold more casual events to people that may be new to playing in a tournament or haven't played in many tournaments. I think everybody has played Beaver Meadow at least once, so they know what they're getting into. They know what it's like when they come out here. They know what the experience is going to be like. It's a fun golf course to play, whether you played it once or you played it a hundred times. As the director of operations, um, my role is really to, um, you know, to guide my staff to, to make sure that we're giving exceptional experiences in course conditions um, and, and customer service to whether, whether you're a full dues paying member or your daily greens fee, we want to make sure that you're out here having a good time at, at Beaver Meadow. Fortunately, we, um, through the vision of you know, our advisory committee and, and, and city council, um, we've, we've had uh, irrigation projects that are continuing on, um, which are gonna make our course conditions you know, so much better. Um, we actually, this year in 2022, um, started a tree project um, where we were able to remove remove and thin trees that have been um, been standing for for probably 
50 or 60 years that should have been should have been removed to help our course conditions. We now have the largest pollinator garden in the city here on the back nine uh, between the 13th and 14th hole and so uh, we're actually doing a lot to improve the canopy here in the city by thinning out some of the forest areas, allowing some of the airflow to continue and then we'll retain that forest. I think something that's really special to me right now particularly pertaining to Beaver is the fact that we sort of secured this golf course as the home for the NHI Boys Individual Championship in the fall. That was something that we talked about. The NHGA is on the NHIA Golf Committee and, and we really wanted to get all of the players in the individual tournament to a single site. And being able to talk to the staff here and, and, and talk to Phil and have Phil go talk to the folks in the city about how important it was for us to be able to create a home for the high school state championship. To me, I, I think what we're doing is creating lasting memories for the high school players that come through here and play in that championship. Beaver Meadow is, is, is not just a golf course anymore as well. Um, it is certainly a year-round destination. Um, indoors, we play golf. Now uh, we've had new simulators since 2015. And now with the indoor simulators, uh, golf is now taken on a year-round um, activity. It is super challenging, but it's fun. It keeps you warmed up for when springtime comes and the course opens up, you're ready to go. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and we've had uh, cross-country ski grooming going on outside. We had a 5K the other day out here, um, ice skating pond. And, uh, and the other thing that's, that's happened is this is becoming more than just a, a, a golf course in the wintertime. Uh, there's um, cross-country skiing and ice skating. So this is really uh, evolving into something for especially the north side of Concord and the residents can be utilized year-round. We're Ward 3 voting, um, voting building as well. Not only are we you know, a golf course celebrating 125 years, but I think the vision of us being a year-round destination um, and a year-round use at, 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 for, um, for all these different activities, um, I think that's a, a bigger part of the vision uh, moving forward too. So for us to, to have a facility like this that's right down the road from where we are, it's great. We've always maintained a great relationship with the staff here, with the city. Um, and I think there's some exciting things on the horizon with the NHGA and, and Beaver Meadow that we're excited about. So this place is always going to have a ton of utility. The players love coming here. We love coming here to administer events. So, um, you know, Beaver's going to be on our tournament schedule for years to come. So we had 34 years, 38 years, there was major improvements on this course. And now we're getting close to 60 years since this, uh, uh, the back nine was built and this pleasant, pleasant clubhouse was built. And uh, so uh, the city council was looking at and uh, seeing that if there can be improvements made for the clubhouse itself and also on the course with irrigation. It's always a challenge to do the budget, but at the same time, we're looking at well over a million dollars to repair this building, to repair it. And then to replace it, when you look at the game of golf today and the manner by which golf courses uh, generate revenue, we are not generating the kind of revenue that we could if we had a more robust clubhouse. The clubhouse is, has to be considered a community center, that there are opportunities here that we don't get to take advantage of. But I think that um, in the coming years, we're going to see big changes here at the golf course beyond what happens at the course, but what happens here at the um, clubhouse because there is much that the city can benefit from here on a revenue side as well as the community side. You know, so we're continually um, um, trying to update, trying to update and, and move forward, um, you know, to make Beaver Meadow last another 125 years. So we're in a kind of a cool phase right now where um, we are 
we are trying to make decisions uh, as a staff to retain retain all of our customers and um, advisory and and and, and uh, city council are certainly looking at the long vision of you know potential new clubhouses um, continuing long-term projects um, if in our CIP program so it, it's a pretty exciting time to you know the vision I feel like um, for Beaver Meadow is is you know it's great that we're celebrating the 125 years but um, I'm pretty excited about the opportunity of the next 50 um, is it, kind of what I feel like is going on right now yeah I mean I think it's it's a golf course that I think everybody who's a golfer in the state has played they, they've had the opportunity to come here, like I said, whether it's once or whether they played here a hundred times. I think there is sort of a, a security blanket almost, if you will, about Beaver Meadow. It's, it's always been here. People know where it is. People know what to expect when they come here, which is a, a great experience on a fun golf course. So it doesn't matter if you're talking about folks that are member, members of private clubs or member, members of other public golf courses. I think Beaver, again, has the reputation of it's, it's, it's always been there, it's a rock, it's steady, you know what you're going to get when you go to Beaver Meadow. And I think there's something to be said for that in a, in a world where things seem to be changing and, and our lives are as fast paced as they've ever been, to have this place that's been here for, for so long and in a lot of ways has changed um, much for the better, but in a lot of ways hasn't changed. You, you have people who show up to play in our events who say, I haven't played here in in 20 or 30 years and yet they remember every single hole of the golf course and there, there is something to be said for that. There, um, there aren't many places like that where I think you, you get so many people that have come out and experienced the golf course and remember their time here um, and I think that makes Beaver pretty special. Mm -hmm.